The next concept is a smaller one in the grand scheme of the class, but it's a small essential piece in that it helps us then determine profit maximization and becomes a key piece of helping us understand uh, the four market structures which are coming up soon. So this idea is utility maximization. Uh, a util or a utility is what you get from consuming something. I get utility from eating a cheeseburger, from uh, watching television, from listening to music, from exercising. All things in my life give me utility. And I want to figure out the way to maximize that utility, meaning I only want to do so much of an activity until I get the full value out of it. So one way to do that, let's say we're eating uh, cups of pineapple and we could have anywhere between zero and, and, and six cups of pineapple. And we want to think about, well, what's the total amount of utility we're getting out of each cup? And so we can have their total utility. And notice the total utility goes up till the fifth cup and then starts coming back down. That is the principle of diminishing marginal utility. This idea that when you do something, the first few things you do with it are going to be really great. But then it starts diminishing in value. This goes for something simple like eating cups of pineapple or something more complicated like hiring workers or figuring out the right number of resources uh, to employ. So this concept of diminishing marginal value or diminishing marginal utility uh, applies both on the consumer and the producer side. Very simply, if we were to take this data and plot it, we would see that the total utility curve, much like the total revenue curve or many other total curves, starts by going up, but then the slope starts to diminish as we consume more and more of the good until the point where it actually comes back down. And if we're maximizing utility, we want to maximize it at this point. Now, an easier way to look at that is always by calculating the marginal value, in this case, marginal utility. So that would be the change in total utility over the change in quantity. Now, marginal of anything, marginal cost, um, is the be best example of the thing that's going to show up often on the exam, is always going to be the change in something. See, I even wrote total cost. I'm so used to doing marginal cost. In this case, it's total utility divided by the change in quantity. Uh, we've talked about the marginal value of laborers, the change in the total output a laborer produces divided by the change in quantity of labor. In this case, since the quantity is changing by one like it typically does, because we don't get a calculator on the exam, we go from zero to 10 or 10. As we go plus one, we went plus 10, so 10 over one is 10. Then we add eight. Six, four, two, and then what happens here is we start going down, negative two. And that's our key giveaway, that should we consume the sixth cup of pineapple? No way. We should stop at five. And so if we were to graph, instead of total utility, we were to graph marginal utility, uh, and this time we only need to go two, four, six, eight, ten. we would see that the marginal utility is initially high and then it starts coming down until the point where actually we need to extend our graph negative. All right, so it's not as straight of slopes. So how many cups of pineapple should we eat? Well, if we're looking just at our data, it should be five. But actually, if we look at our graph, maybe we want five and a half. Maybe we want to consume just a little bit more to squeeze as much total utility as we can out of the cups of pineapple. Now along with this, and this should be familiar to those of you who are thinking about uh, the markets for resources that we just finished talking about, what if we are consuming not one thing but two things? What if we're eating pineapples and um, hot dogs, or pineapples and hamburgers? Right? If we've got two goods, and we want to figure out how to maximize the value we're getting from both goods, we need to use a formula. We need to use the marginal value of x over the price of x equals the marginal utility from y over the price of y. And this should look so familiar because this is what we just did with uh, resources, right? We did this with labor and capital, the marginal 
um, product, uh, the value of the marginal product of capital over the price of capital, setting an equal to the value of the marginal product of labor over the price of labor. And this helps us determine, based on the amount of money, the price we're spending on each good, are we maximizing the utility we're getting from it? So let's say for good X, the last one we consumed gave us a marginal utility of 20. The price of that last one was $10. At the same time, the last unit of Y that we consumed gave us a marginal utility of 15, and the price of that was five. So which one is giving us more utility per dollar? So if we simplify, this becomes two, and this becomes three. So this is, and this is a hard concept, we're getting more value from Y than we are from X. So in terms of the, the analysis we should put on this, we should consume less X and more Y. We should do the one that gives us more utility per dollar. It's not because this one is cheaper. It's not because this one gives us more utility. It's because this one, when we simplify it, gives us three utils per one dollar. This one gives us two utils per one dollar. And so we want to do more of the one that gives us more utility. And so, like I said at the beginning of the video, this concept of total utility and especially marginal utility makes a big uh, difference in whether or not you then understand how to analyze the profit scenarios relating to the four market structures.